that we would remember the sacrifice of the love of Jesus Christ, that night of passion that he poured out himself, that we would have life and life everlasting. And so on tonight, my brothers and sisters, I welcome you. I welcome you to, the, to worship here for Good Friday at Willow Road Family Church in Rich Square, North Carolina. Yeah. I welcome you, oh God, into this space. I not just welcome you, but I welcome our Lord. I welcome our Savior, the Holy Spirit, to come and have his way in this space this evening. I am Joanne Bedford Lord, and I am the pastor here, and my brother and my sister here. <laughs> And if, as we are gathered tonight, this is Good Friday. That's right. And last evening, we we uh, we celebrated the Lord's Supper, the Last Supper. We celebrated that, and we in the ten embrace service, we we extinguished the candles as as representatives of those who betrayed Christ, those who said they would be there, but they walked away, they turned away, they ran away, they fled, and then when He was then taken away, taken down from the cross, and buried in the tomb. Though it appeared that his, his, that his life was over, though it appeared as though there was nothing left, all the light of Jesus Christ continues to shine. And so you see here on the altar table, we have taken all of the adornments off, all of the fancies of God. We are here just together. And so tonight as we are sharing with one another, it is basics. Can y'all say basics? Basics. It's basics. Basics. We will be basic. We will be old school. Come on. Old school in the ways that we used to tap our feet, clap our hands, lift up our voices. We're going to be old school tonight. Yes, we had plans from musicians and all kinds of other folks, but we come to just worship the Lord. We have stripped the house of the adornments. And so now, my brothers and sisters, I would say we've even stripped the environment of the things that are distractions, uh -huh. the things that keep us from really worshiping the Lord. Because if we are really truthful about this, if we are really looking within, we know that it doesn't take all that. Amen. It Amen. just takes our praise. Amen? Amen. Amen. There's days when I'm walking through the house, I don't have a musician. My, my, my. I don't have anybody to, to stir up a little synthesizer oh, or any symbols, but I do know that my praise is still good. That's it is it. still worthy unto the Lord. And so this evening, I just ask that you don't hold back your praise, that you would make some noise in here, that you would let them, oh, let them know yeah. that he has no place here. You see, when you're silent, when you're quiet, he kind of can get in here and have his way. But we're not going to let that happen tonight. In the name of Jesus, we will make some noise in here. Amen. 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 So why don't you worship with me tonight as we go through this experience of time? We'll be sharing the scriptures tonight that are indicative of the time that Jesus was on the cross. Yes. And then, brother, my brother, Reverend Yarbrough, will come and he will encourage our hearts on this Good Friday night. And so again, I welcome you and I ask that together we would worship the Lord. So may the Lord be with you and your responses and also with you. Amen. 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 Let us sing our first hymn together. Our first hymn together is one that is familiar to us. Oh, what a friend we have in Jesus. Yeah. Oh, what a friend we have in Jesus. All our griefs and sins to bear. Oh, what a friend we have in Jesus. And I gotta get to my page. Mm -hmm. Oh, I don't know. So. Some folk know it just like that. Oh, page number three tell. <laughs> if you find it first, tell me what it is. Because we help each other out. 325. That's what I thought. Thank you. 325. Amen. Now do 323. 323, she said. 323. Sometimes it's two or three of them in there. All right. Yes, indeed. What a friend we have in Jesus. All our sins and griefs to bear. What a privilege it is to carry everything to God in prayer. Oh, what peace we often forfeit, and oh, what needless pains we bear, all because we do not carry everything 
Everybody say everything, everything, everything to God in prayer. Let's sing together. You might need to stand to your feet so you can really lift your voices unto the Lord. Amen. 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 Let us sing together. What have we had in Jesus? All our sins and griefs to bear. What the throne of grace together. Holy and gracious God. Holy and awesome God. Holy, righteous, and giving and loving God. Oh, we, your children, have gathered this evening. We've gathered this evening to reflect on the love and the sacrifice yes, God. that you made that we would not have to die to sin, but that we would have life and life everlasting. Oh, Lord God, we come bearing our own burdens, bearing our own sins. We come acknowledging and knowing that we haven't all been what we should be. We haven't done all that we should do. And, Lord God, we've even said some things we should not have said. But, oh, Lord God, because it is your countenance, because it is your posture, because it is your character that you see us and know us, and can forgive us. So, oh God, we come asking for forgiveness. We don't ask it, oh God, because we feel like we're do this. We don't, we don't ask, oh God, because we believe we're entitled to it. But we know, oh God, that it's only because of your love that you offer it to us. So we ask, oh God, forgive us. Forgive us, for we have, we have been just like the bystanders there at the foot of the cross. We've been just like the soldiers gambling and casting lots. Oh, Lord God, we've been just like others who did not see it as a sacrifice, but more of a spectacle. And so, oh God, we don't come just to be spectators, but we come to be participants, knowing your agony and that your, your love and your laying down your life was not for just in vain, my, 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 my. but that you did it that we would have life and life everlasting. So, Lord God, hear us tonight. Yes, hear us when we lift our voices unto you. Hear us, O oh Lord, when it's a quiet mumble or whisper. Oh, Lord God, oh, if we had a thousand tongues, we, we wouldn't have enough of them to say just thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank the Lord. Oh, when we look back and we think the things over, we think about where we've been, and how far you brought us. We're thankful, Lord. So God, come and fill this temple. 
Please, God. Come and fill this temple. Let your spirit take control. Oh, God, get each and every one of us out of the way. Get each and every distraction out of the way. Get each and every one of us in a position and posture to seek your face. Yes. Oh, in the name of Jesus. We love and we praise you tonight. Praise you, God. We praise you and we give you all of the praise. Yes. And so, Lord God, we ask now that this preacher whom you sent to us, this preacher whom you sent, who has studied him and he has he has checked it out, and he's worked it out, he's wrestled with it, oh Lord God. That now you would make the preaching easy, that you would come and be his mouthpiece, and you would just let him even be amazed at what you have to say to us, oh God. So do it, God. We know you can, because you can do all things. You can do all things. Oh Lord, it's in Jesus' name that we pray. And we give you all the glory and all the praise tonight. And together, the people of God say amen. amen. And thank you, Lord. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I just want to As you see in the bulletins, just a few scriptures will be lifted that we would position ourselves and have our minds ready for what God is going to do tonight. Uh, Reverend Glenda Poindexter is here with us this evening, and she is sharing. Y'all give the Reverend Poindexter some love. Amen. 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 And Brother Kevin back there. Amen. Amen. And you know, Brother Adrian, he gets a little jealous if I talk about somebody else. Come on. So, Brother Adrian, back there. Amen. Oh, these, these first gentlemen who stand in the gate. Thank you, Lord. To keep us. We are so grateful for them. Amen. 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 Very important there, too. Good evening, good evening, Lord. Oh, we meet you this evening in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. We're so grateful to be in this place. We thank God for traveling mercies. We thank God for how he's kept us, amen. amen. God has kept us over the highways and byways through and through. We stand here because it's only by the grace of God. Amen. amen. Our scripture tonight, if you bear with me, will be in the book of Isaiah, the 55th chapter. And we will be reading... Verses 5 through 8. Amen. Um, I'm going to read the King James Version, if that's all right. That's all right. Okay, and it says, Isaiah 55, verse 5 through 8. And it reads, Behold, thou shalt call a nation that thou knowest not, and nations that knew not thee shall run unto thee because of the Lord thy God and for the Holy One of Israel, for he hath glorified thee. Seek ye the Lord while he may be found. Call ye upon him while he is near. Let the wicked forsake his way and the righteous man his thoughts and let him return unto the Lord and he will have mercy upon him and to our God, for he will abundantly pardon for my thoughts are not your thoughts, well, neither are your ways my ways, save the Lord. That's God's word for God's people. Amen. 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 And on Good Friday, on Good Friday, there were, after Jesus had been up all night long, going from courtroom to courtroom, my God. up all night long, Hearing accusation after accusation, hearing people testifying there against him, making up things, saying things, that when the night had finally ended, some would have said it was over. Now he could catch a breath. It only began to get worse. Have mercy. For after a long night, 
a long night of accusations, trumped up charges, oh, Jesus. false witnesses, being mocked, being teased, as if it wasn't enough to persecute his character. They began to abuse his, his physical body, beating, whipping, stretching him out, pulling him from here to there, dragging him from one place to another. And as if that were not enough, that the night had not been long enough, the day began. The day began with the public humiliating crucifixion. That Jesus was then dragged out given a cross and told to take it up the hill. Okay. It's nine o'clock in the morning. Have mercy, God. And after dragging that cross himself and the siren being commandeered to carry it some portions of the way, That there at nine o'clock, mm -hmm. at the breaking of day, it was the worst of it. For the Bible says that Jesus was placed on the cross at 9 a.m. And darkness covered the land from noon until his death at 3 p.m. The scriptures we'll lift up this morning, this evening, are those that will recount how Jesus' love and his passion were tested, tried, trivialized, and it was through his darkest hours that he did all of this just for you, and for me. Amen. Amen. So after a long night came the morning. For it was nine o'clock in the morning when they crucified him. The Bible says they stretched him out. They pierced him in his hands his feet, and in his side. And then they hung him up high for all to see. Tick, talk, tick, talk. The hours are passing by. It's now about noontime, and darkness has come over the whole land, and it came over the whole land until three, because the sun's light failed. The sun's light, the S-U-N, failed. How many of you know the S-O-N? Mm. Never fails. Never. My mama. Never. Never. Tick. Top. Tick. Top. You all know if I had some music, I give you a little time to reflect on that. But in this time, I'll ask that the ushers would come and serve you. As you think about my Lord and my Savior, stretched out, up high. Though the sun did not shine, I believe it was still hot because the gates of hell had been swung open. Hell believed it was going to be victorious. Uh, my, my. Tick, top. Tick, top. Come on, Ashes. Jesus 
went to Calvary to save a wretch like you and me. That's love. That's love. My Jesus went to Calvary to save a wretch like you and me. That's love. That's love. They hung them high. They stretched them wide. He hung his head. For me he died. That's love. That's love. They hung them high. They stretched him wide. He hung his head. For me, he died. That's love. That's love. But that's not how the story ends. For every day, he rose again. That's love. The story ends for every day. He rose again. That's love. That's love. Oh, what love he has for me. That's love. That's love. Hallelujah. Let us stand. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I just know the Lord. He always got a ram in the bush. <laughs> he knows what he knows the help I need when I don't even know I need it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lord God, I come before you thanking you. I thank you. I thank you, oh Lord. I thank you for these gifts. Yeah. I thank you for the givers. I thank you, oh God, that they give out of their means, out of what they have, oh God. And that, Lord God, they don't do it out of show, but they come to just give back to you a portion of all that you've given to us. Now, Lord God, make it more than enough. Yes, sir. Make it more than enough that we would not just be impressive to someone else, but that we might impact someone else's life. Yes. It's in Jesus' name that we pray, and together all things come of thee, O oh Lord. All things come of thee. Oh, Lord, and of thine own heavenly gift of thee. Amen. Amen, amen. And you may be seated as we travel through these times, these hours. For now, day is done. All right. Three o'clock has finally arrived. I don't know about anybody who might still go to the office or still work, go in about nine o'clock. By about 10.30, you're looking at the clock saying, is that all? That's all it is. Oh, three o'clock can't get here soon enough. I just can't imagine the clock feeling like it has stopped. No tick tock, but more like tick. But finally, three o'clock has come. And it's at three o'clock that Jesus cried out with a loud voice. Eloi, Eloi, Elema, Sambatio, Thani. Which means, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me?
pray for the preacher. Amen. Amen. Pastor, teacher, Robert Yarbrough. Amen. He comes to us as a friend. Mm -hmm. He comes to us as a seasoned preacher, an eloquent orator, one who works hard to serve the community and the church. He does so many things that many times when I check my Facebook posts and I say, well, I don't know when this fellow goes to work. <laughs> <laughs> but I welcome him and I would ask that you would pray for him and welcome him. Give God some glory for his coming. That he can do it. Amen. Praise the Lord, everybody. Come on, praise the Lord, everybody. We greet you in the name that surely is above every name, the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. Amen. And all of his joy. Let the church shout, joy. joy. Come on, if you really mean it, throw your head back and shout, real joy. Real joy. That's a good mic. This is a good mic and a hot spot. Praise the Lord. Amen. I, I, I double dog dare you. Amen. To give a standing ovation to the one who woke you up this morning. The one who started you on your way. The one who blessed you and kept you. They that that your bed didn't become your moving board. Nor your covers your wine and cheek. Whether you fell asleep in a living room or in a bedroom. Glory to God, he brought you out of his house, down his street, and his car. Into his house on a good Friday to hear a word from the Lord. Amen. I don't know who that was singing. Praise be God. Hallelujah. Would you sing one more song? This song is not, y'all may be seated. Amen. This song is not, amen, for y'all. This song is for me. Amen. You sing another one. You need me to bring you the mic, sister. You all right? Go, go Acapulco style. Amen. God bless you. Amen. I, 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 I want to encourage every single person, amen, that's on the line. I'm trying to be the goal tonight of uh, sending $1,000, amen. Uh, to Willow Oak Church, if somebody would help me to do that tonight. Amen. I've already sent my $250 to give the five. Amen. To give the five. Go on with the give the five self. Amen. So we bless the Lord today. I know the church is going to send at least 500 or 250 more to make that 500, but I'm looking for a king or a queen. I'm looking for a son or a daughter to help us to meet our goal tonight. And we have a word from the Lord. Amen. Y'all be quiet and let this sister sing and get me ready to preach a word for the Lord. Amen. That's good. Far away. Now come on, join in. Stood it all rugged rocks. The emblem of suffering and shame. And I love.
the Lord a hand clap of praise. Thank you, sister. Amen. To bless the Lord in a major way. We thank the Lord. Amen. To you. Amen. All of you. Amen. We thank God. Amen. I'm rearranging furniture. Is that all right? Amen. That means I'm ready to get loose in here. Amen. God bless you, sir. Amen. Don't worry about that. Go and sit down at this time for service now. Amen. Now for preaching now. Praise the Lord. We give God the glory, honor, and praise. Give it up for St. Uh, for Mark in the building. Amen. We bless the Lord. If you guys make it safe and sound, we bless the Lord. I'm looking at one of our stewards, Sister Vicky. Amen. And she's fresh out of surgery. Amen. But made her way here. And I give God the glory for that. And I thank God for her. Amen. We bless the Lord. My Amen. One of my trustees are here. He came with the other camera and everything. Amen. You ready to go to work? Amen. Go and sit down, brother. Have a good time in the Lord and bless the Lord. Amen. My head usher. Amen. Mary Jo Shelley. I don't recognize you, girl. With this African God got the hair all done. That's how you had your head done at the gate. I walked past it three times. I'm like, who that? who that sister over there? Amen. So we bless the Lord today, and uh, we thank God. It's been a uh, it's been a good day. It's been a good day. Uh, when I was a young preacher, amen, don't let the ball hit for me, amen, I was a younger preacher, I used to say, man, why did we have those seven last words? I don't ever get a chance to preach one of those. I want to preach one of those. And then when you get a chance to preach, they give you the first word or the second one or the third. I was like, why don't I don't ever get the sixth word? Why don't, why don't I don't ever get the seventh word? Well, be careful what you ask for. Amen. Somebody called me a month ago and said, hey, we want you to preach the seventh word at five o'clock in the morning. I said, amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. By the time I got on, it was about 645. Praise the Lord. Amen. I preached a whole hour to God. I'm just kidding. I preached. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. My, my wife wonders as well. Amen. Will I ever get any sleep? We bless the Lord today. I was supposed to preach three times today. I told the second one, I just ain't going to be able to make it. Amen. We bless the Lord. Y'all going without me. But I would not, amen, have missed the opportunity to come, amen, to Willow Oak, amen, and to be with my, my sister here, amen, Reverend uh, Joanne Beckford Boy. Give it up for your pastor, amen. Praise the Lord. I, I tell St. Mark all the time, amen, never let anybody out praise you. Amen for your pastor. Amen. You go somewhere else and they, they clap it louder for, amen, uh, your pastor than you are. Amen. Remember, we are the African Methodist Episcopal Church. You'll be here today and gone tomorrow. Amen. Amen. You'll be reassigned. You'll be like, man, we done missed a good one. Listen, we should have took care of her. We should have been acting like we appreciated her. Amen. And we bless the Lord. We thank God for our beloved sister, amen, as well. Amen. I don't know why I miss coming up here preaching for you, amen, but we're going to find a way to do it, and we bless the Lord today. I um, I always wanted to be in a place, and I remember presiding elder um, Thomas O. Nixon. Can I start like this and get myself together? Amen. Um, and the fish was good. Praise the Lord. Amen. Uh, the fish was good. Amen. Amen. It's all is good. Amen. And they had mustard and hot sauce. Glory to God. Amen. St. Mark knew what I'm talking about. Praise the Lord. Amen. But I always wanted to be in a position where I could be a blessing. Amen. As Reverend Nixon talked about. Amen. Uh, to other churches. I just remember uh, my first church uh, two and a half hours away. One way. 
Amen. Uh, I would go and eight people would be there. Amen. And they would shout holler. All I had to do was say, Jesus, hallelujah. And they'd wait for me at the back door. Oh, you preached today. And all I said was, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Amen. <laughs> and they'd shout and run and follow, swallow and slide all over the place. They'd have a great time in the Lord. And they talk about me like I was the greatest preacher since sliced bread. And, and, and bless the Lord, I would go up there three times a week. Amen. I think they paid me 25 hours. Amen. And then they said, well, Pastor, we don't want you to come all this way. Amen. And not give you an opportunity to lay your head down. So they gave me an extra 25 hours so I could stay at the hotel. Praise the Lord. Amen. I was a fancy pastor. I was, I was fancy. And then somebody had the nerve, the audacity, the unmitigated goal to say, you got the biggest church, amen, in Stanford, Texas. I said, oh, yeah? I said, well, we had about 40 young people that joined by that time. Our eight had gone to 30 lead. Amen. So we, our little amen. church, about a quarter of the size of this church, amen. Uh, we had already toured down my second week. I didn't know anything. I had to write a resolution. Amen. Because I never came first quarter and said, boy, where is the church? What, what did you do with the church? I said, oh, I forgot to tell you. We, we bought a storefront downtown. And uh, he said, son, answer my question. Where is the church? I said, oh, I tore the church down. I, I tore it down. He said, you can't do that, Robert. You just you have to have a resolution. You just can't tear the church down. Well, I said, we had some young people show up, and they looked at me, and they said, oh, Pastor. I said, why not lean into the stop? We are looking at standing outside the church. They said, um, our church is leaning to the side. <laughs> I said, y'all, y'all don't want to come here. Okay, fine, we're going to tear it down. So the brother had a bulldozer down the street. I said, hey, my brother, hey, how you doing? You, you, I'm, I'm a pastor, pastor, young brother, we pastor over here. Can you help me push this church over? He said, uh, you want me to push it over with the boat? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. He said, we're going to have to do something on the roof first, get the roof taken off, and, and if you help me do that, I'll push it over for you. Got up on the roof. This brother got saved on the roof. Lord, have mercy. Got my first soul saved. Hallelujah. Pushed the church over. All we left there was the stairs. Amen. We had left the stairs there. Amen. I'm talking about a heater up front and, and, and the air conditioning in the back and the swamp cooler up in the front. Y'all don't know what I'm talking about. Amen. I had on a full suit. Amen. And a robe because I was so proud of my robe. Hallelujah. I was so excited, amen, about ministry. And my wife didn't trust me to drive up there by myself. So she'd go, I'd go up on Tuesday, come back on Thursday. And then we started a Friday night live. And the football is big in Texas. And praise God, amen. Young people started coming in. Then their parents started coming and saying, what are you doing? So my young people, they want to be in church all the time. Amen. And, and, and the Lord really blessed in a major way. But bless the Lord. Amen. I remember calling on Reverend Franklin, amen, at Big Bethel at Lubbock, Texas. Come down. He'd bring two busloads, amen. He'd fill my little church up, praise God. Amen. He'd say, how much is your annual conference assessment? I said, about $1,200. About $1,200. Here, here, here's $1,200. I tried to give him two, $300. He looked at me like, oh, man, what are you trying to do? Amen. I said, I want to pay you for being here. You can't pay me for the gospel. All of that kind of good stuff, but he'd give us about three or four thousand dollars. We had enough for annual conference and for the next amen for district conference and the Sunday school convention. Glory to the God. Amen. I said, I ain't quite there yet, but I'm gonna get there. Praise the Lord. I want to be a blessing to where we go. We understand that we're in this thing called African Methodism. So yes, Usher, you may be seated. I don't know why I had y'all standing so long. Y'all waiting for me to read the scripture. I said they've been trained well. Praise the Lord. Amen. Like, like I ain't been in this thing for a minute. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Sister Mary Jo, you need to go get on the door. No, I'm just kidding. Leave that alone. I won't even go there with y'all today. But I want to um, I want to talk. And, and first of all, welcome all of those online. Thank God for our AB person. Give it up for uh, Sister Elise Young. She's online controlling this thing. I think we still got a signal somewhere. Amen. And we, we bless the Lord for those that are online. I'm still I'm, I'm sure I'm waiting for Delia to tell me if we reached a thousand yet. Amen. She's going to tell me in a minute. But I want to preach today, amen, um, about a black man's cross to bear. I want to preach about a black man's cross, amen, to bear. And when 
I began to think about um, what happened in Baltimore. Have y'all heard about what happened in Baltimore? They said a ferry boat hit a bridge. Not only did it hit the bridge, it took the whole bridge down. Now this is um, something that really blew my mind. They said when the bridge fell, the mayor, young brother too, man, yeah. uh, they, they were quite um, confused <laughs> that, that a mayor could look like that, have a little afro, amen. Uh, have a nice little cool little jacket on, amen. I don't know if he had a five a or Delta Sigma Theta. I don't know if he had all that on him on his jacket, but bless the Lord, and he was there, and they, and they tried to trip him up. But how many of you know that we got to be overly qualified when we move into the role? Amen. And, and bless the Lord, amen. Uh, they asked him, what, "When are you going to rebuild? When are you going to get this infrastructure back up?" He said, "We're not talking about that tonight." We're talking about people still in the water. I need to take care of that right now. Loved ones are not worried about whether it's going to be a bridge tomorrow. They're trying to make a funeral arrangements for loved ones that are in the water. And trying to figure out whether they're going to have an open casket or a closed casket. And I began to think, amen, that how many of you know that even some of the tricks of the enemy is of, of discrimination is built right into our bridge? Y'all knew that, but I, I didn't know that. They, they would build the bridge system, but they, amen, that, that they such that they would make it so low that buses couldn't get over there, and you'd have to take a country route to get there, to get to their lake, or to get to their river, or get to their ocean, because they really didn't want you there. So, so it, it, it doesn't take me much to begin to think about, amen, what we need to do to begin to see where we are in the word of God and what God is saying to us that's so relevant even today what we ought to do to get ourselves prepared for what the Lord has for us. So I want to talk about a black man's cross to bear. Amen. I'm just going to, uh, just one scripture. Amen. Uh, Mark 15, 21. Just one scripture. You talked about it. I was like, man, unless you ain't going to deal with my sermon tonight. Leave my sermon alone. Amen. Praise the Lord. Mark um, 15 and um, 21. Just one verse. And it goes something like this. This is the uh, American Standard Version. It says, And they compelled one passing by, Simon of Cyrene. He was coming from the country. He was the father of Alexander and Rufus. Amen. Ah, praise God. To go with them that he might bear, amen, his cross. Pray with me over, amen, a black man's cross to bear. Father God, in the name of Jesus, allow us to succeed without success, to persevere without stress, to arrive without striving, so that all that we say and do will be done unto the honor and the glory of you. Lord, don't let them be impressed with me, but yet let them have a closer walk with thee. Let your word, amen, bring edification to your people, horrification to the devil, and glorification to your name. This is Jesus by the name we pray and ask it all. And the people of God said, amen, amen. Uh, I want y'all to go with me on a journey as if Simon of Cyrene was preaching this Good Friday himself. Amen. I don't know about personal pronouns. I know that's a big thing nowadays. Amen. But I'm going to be speaking in the third person as if I was Simon and Cyrene himself. Hear his story. Amen. About my time or the road of history, which was brief. And I was, I'm not a lot in your Bible, but I came suddenly and I just left suddenly. But how many of you know that you want to get your name in the word of God? Amen. How many know you want to make your name in the last book of life? Hallelujah. Somebody. But 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 it was an important time. It was a time for you to understand what it was like, that you might understand something about who I am. Let me describe myself to you. Yes, I am a Jew, but I do not live in the land of our fathers. My name is Shimon, or Simon to you. Amen. I'm from the Roman province 
of siren. Amen. You might notice by the melody count in my skin, amen, that I'm related to the brothers over in the continent of Africa. Yes, now I, I was raised both Greco-Roman and Jewish. Amen. Like, like y'all. Y'all are African. Amen. And American. Lord have mercy. Amen. And now some of y'all are Southern and, and maybe got some Northern. Amen. In you as well. But now everything was a Roman province. Amen. In my time. We tolerated those Romans, of course. Like, y'all tolerate the Republican. I mean, y'all tolerate, amen, people in y'all day. You could do little else but tolerate the Romans. If you didn't tolerate them, they got rid of you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But but, but I lived in Cyrene, you know, to you, North Africa, if you will. And as I said, I was Jewish, amen, by birth and by my upbringing. But there was another side that made me, amen, many like you, amen, you might have a culture, you might, amen, be from Jamaica, amen, you might be from Haiti, amen, you might have, amen, roots in the Caribbean, amen, like that, amen, it was a cultural side to me, the side of the empire, not the Roman empire, I'm not talking about that empire, though those Romans could do nothing but collect, but, but no, the culture of our world was Greek. Amen. I was a learned brother. I, I knew, amen, my ABCs. I knew my one, two, threes. I, I was called Hellenistic, if you will. Jew by our countrymen in Palestine. And being both Jew and Greek, hallelujah, caused me some great concern. Amen. It's like being educated and being black at the same time. It's like being the mayor, amen, of Baltimore and having to have a melody count that's greater than zero. Yeah, yes, they, they're looking at me and they don't quite understand me. I've been there, uh, uh, fear factor, I've been there boogeyman, if you will, for a long time. We had to go on this particular year, amen, to the feast of Passover, of the unleavened bread, and we would stay some 50 day oh man, convention was fun, y'all. Amen. We would go there, amen. We would hang out for weeks, amen. It was one festival after another. Oh, y'all, y'all don't party like we party. Amen. We, we praise God. But, 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 amen. After those 50 days, amen, for the Feast of Pentecost would kick in, and, and the law of God said that every Jewish man, every, every one of us was to go up to the Holy City, watch this three times a year, and in the fall, amen, for the Feast of Booths, and in the spring to the Feast of Passover, and the Feast of Pentecost. And so we went, amen. My cousins were there with me, my nephews, my brothers, amen, were there as well. So now in these days, it was safest to go by ship, amen. I know some of y'all are cruisers, amen, amen, so y'all know what I'm talking about. If you could call it that, uh, those big tubs that the Romans had, well, they were run by Phoenician sailors, but it would have usually taken them about two weeks to get there. But now, amen, we are the good two weeks for me, for it gave me hours to begin to read the Holy Scriptures. Can I park Simon for a second and just mention to the young persons that are in here, Read the word of God, my brother. Read the word of God, my sister. I found myself, amen, at my desk at Rutgers University, amen, putting aside the physics book, putting aside the chemistry book, and picking up the word of God for the first time. And they said, what is Robert in there doing? God had compelled me to read his word, to understand what was going on in my life, what was going on on that campus, what was going on. This is a time when apartheid was happening. This is a time when we were, we were protesting everything that moved. Amen. That wasn't said. Amen. It was doing something for our people. It was a time when we were proud to be black. We were black medallions, and if I had enough hair, I'd wear an afro too. But glory to God for, for my youth back to Simon. Of course, I had no descriptions. I knew well the first five books of Moses. I bet you don't know them. I bet, I bet you know people don't. I bet y'all don't know them. Not only did I know them, amen, but I could actually recite large sections of them. Yeah, I, I memorized them. Yes, I, I hid the word of God down on the inside of my heart, amen, that I might not forget what the Lord has done for me, but the 
because I'm telling you, when you're going through some tough times, amen, you can't call home, and you can't call mama, and you can't call your pastor, and you can't remember the name of the song. You don't remember what the Lord God has said to you. Oh, I'm preaching already. I, I need a towel or something, but I'm sorry. I can't be equipped today. But, 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 but so, so he says to us that there will be always bring me into mind the question that every time I, I, I go into my Jewish mind, could these things really be so? Things about the kingdom, about the greatness of Israel, which will be restored as it was in the days of our great King Solomon. I wondered about it. To my mind, and, and, and I wanted to know some things about this 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 man, this anointed one, and his anointing. I, I wanted to know about the Messiah. I wanted to know about the Christos. I, I wanted to know about the Messiah. I wanted to know about this Christ. My Greek side said, certainly these things are ridiculous. They cannot be true. They're only fables. They're only myths. That, that, that's, that's, that's what the Greeks would say. But everything to the Greeks was fables. Everything to the Greeks was myths. But my Jewish side kept rumbling up inside of me and saying, certainly not. These things are true. These things are right. And it kept fighting with the Greek side of me that kept trying to normalize it and make sense of it all. But then I saw it. Have mercy, God. He, he, we crossed paths. I, I, I didn't realize. Hallelujah. Oh, oh, Amen. I don't know about you, but, but, but when you come across somebody all oh, so great and so anointed, you think to yourself, will I be ready? Will I know what to say? Will I ask for an autograph? Will I want to take a selfie? Will I make a picture? What will I do in that moment when I see them, when I meet them for the first time? As always, we came to uh, the port of Joppa, amen, and we took our journey up to the Holy City, and our journey to the Holy City was almost, it was, it was a pretty difficult time. There was a hard hill to climb for. On the land, we had to travel, listen, by foot. We didn't have no cars and Lexus, amen. We had no buses and, amen, no bicycles or motorbikes. And we had to travel for two days by foot. So we would climb, amen. Because it was really, really, really hot. You, you couldn't bar, you couldn't even steal a major donkey, let alone, amen, get somebody to walk with you. But as we walked with others, we began to think, and we, as we began to think, to think, thinking became deep thoughts. But the day came when we came to the crest of the hill, have mercy, God, and we looked, and there before us, What's the ancient city? I, I don't know if you ever been to Texas before and you ever driving out to El Paso. Hey Amen. There's nothing but desert to your left, desert to your right, desert behind you, and desert in front of you. But when you come up to the hill and you look down, you see El Paso. Hey Amen. The city of lights. You begin to say to yourself, we made it. We're there. We can now see. It was that kind of moment that we had. Oh, you see, I'm becoming more Jewish already, y'all. It, it was our city, Jerusalem. It was the city of David. Oh, perhaps this year it would happen. Perhaps this year the Messiah would come. Oh, it would not be wonderful. It wouldn't be wonderful if he came while I was there. What if he showed up and I was there? Hallelujah. Oh, glory to God. I don't know. Some of y'all get excited to see the bishop. Some of y'all get excited to see the governor. Some of y'all get excited to see your local mayor. I want you to get excited when Jesus shows up. Oh, have mercy, God. With others, we pour toward the sea. Oh, my God, we, we stayed inside the city itself. And, of course, our, it was out of the question, amen, for us to really stay in the city. Y'all remember what it looked like now. Okay, now. Uh, only the very wealthy, let me put it that way, stayed in the city. And we didn't have those kind of means. Amen. And so we would camp out. Amen. Which was a fun for us. But we camped out on the ground outside of the west wall. With others outside the east wall. But from there, we were going to the city for the celebrations of the various days. Y'all know what I'm talking about. 
I'm talking about them street parties, man. I'm talking about black parties. I'm not talking about no house stuff. I'm not talking about no backyard stuff. I'm talking about when they shut the street down. Hey, when you roll in the riches, hallelujah. Glory to God. They got barriers set up. Pump right there. Get out the way. Get out the car. And come on. You can already hear the music. You can already smell the fish frying. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Food is everywhere. It reminds me when I went to the uh, the greatest homecoming on earth. Uh, that's what my son said it's called. Uh, G ho down there in North Carolina AT. He said, Daddy, let's go get something to eat. I said, boy, you don't smell that food. What's wrong with you talking about go get something to eat? Let me show you how this is done. We, we had homecoming. That was a homecoming. Y'all never been homecoming. Y'all never been homecoming. Let me try to understand. When you're at homecoming, hey, amen, you don't go buy no food from McDonald's. This ain't a time for you to make a run to Zaxby's, baby. This ain't a time for KFC. It's a time for you to just look meek and, uh, and, and, and lowly and walk yourself, amen, through those, amen, channels of food, amen, and dare, amen, a mother would dare you to walk by that table. Baby, you better come here. You better, I know you ain't going to walk by my table and not get none of my chicken wings, not get them some of my fried rice. Not get some of my devil. Then, oh, mama, I would never do that. Oh, my God. How would I disrespect you like that? And then now mama on this side. Amen. Not compete with mama on that side. Amen. Because she said, well, you eat her chicken. You better come over here and get some of my chicken. Hallelujah. She, she ain't got no baked beans like I got baked. Oh, my God. Amen. By time, we got to sit down. We, we need about three or four all of the legs. Amen. To carry on. It was that kind of atmosphere. One feast after another. But on this particular feast, I went into the city for the first time. I'm, I'm there with my two sons, Alexander, the other one I named Rufus. No, you gotta be black and name one Rufus. <laughs> one Alexander. We don't have them names no more. We got Sequila and Shakisha, Zakina and Arisha. Glory to God. Amen. They looked at me, start laughing. They said, "What's your name, preacher?" I said, "I'm Pastor Rob." Dude, like, you got a white name. I said, "Oh Lord, have mercy." Oh God, who do you know? But but he, he, he said, "I'm with my sons, Alexander and Rufus, and we we went in the city." And you know how you can just sense something? Something's about to go down. Now that, that's something bad. I mean, you can sense a riot too. It's time for you to get out there and go home, baby. But but something was special was happening. It was different than before. Yeah. And I tell you, as we walked in, Brother Green, we could feel it yeah. from every side. Yeah. It was over us, it was underneath us, it was around us. It was always exciting to be in the city at the feast time, particularly the feast, watch this, of unleavened bread. Yeah. Or the excitement didn't come from our priests and our Levites. I could never understand how these men could take something as exciting and marvelous as the exodus from Egypt, as a deliverance from slavery, I mean a deliverance of God, and, 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 and pass it through seas, pass over, and make it dull. Oh, but they managed to do it. Oh, man, and they would preach, and it'd be so tired, we'd be falling asleep. But there was something else happening this time. You mean like, you know, when the scripture says, I came to church like I've always come to church before, but this time I saw something different. I think it was Isaiah that said, he said, I saw high and lifted up. Have mercy, God. And they said, the train of his robe ah, filled the temple. Have mercy, God. See, when you have one of those kind of moments, you don't worry about anybody else joining the church. You wait, you can't wait. You down on the start blocks like you, you've been opening up the doors of the church now. I'm about to bust through here, get saved, get my life to Christ. Amen. Because you do it, you would recognize that the train of his robe when he comes in. It's just like a king who has conquered other kingdoms. When you conquer the kingdom, what you would do is not only did you cut the head off the king if he disobeyed you, but he said, Look, I bow to you. I give you homage, I give you money, amen. What he would do is take his robe off, and you would take his robe, and you would sew his robe into your robe as the conquering king. So here he is, Lord, high, lifted up, train of his robe, 
is long. Why? I, I, if you allow me to have my signified imagination, because some of y'all may have to go in a minute. But let me give you this, because this one's for free. I don't know what you need to conquer in your life right now. But I see the Lord high and lifted up. And I see the train of his robe in this place. I don't know if it's cancer. Hallelujah. I don't know if it's Parkinson. I don't know what it is. It might be a financial drain in your life. You might be looking, amen, for a relationship. Maybe you're looking for another job right now. The God that we serve will make a way out of no way and conquer this world of every king, every dominion, and he will be high. Thank you, sir. And lift it up, Lord, and give me one that match my outfit. Glory to God. <laughs> Hallelujah. You know I got to preach now. I'm going to fill this stuff up. Amen. I ain't even in the band. I'm going to keep it in myself. I suppose, I suppose y'all there were some rumors that the young rabbi, you know, from Galilee, oh, this smell good. <laughs> Valley Fresh. Glory to God. Uh, the young man had, he had caused quite a stir, y'all. And it was said that he actually performed miracles. Anybody can stand a miracle? Amen. Amen. Anybody know the difference between a blessing and a miracle? Yeah. Hallelujah. A, a, a miracle, you can't do nothing about it. You just get that. God just gives you that. A blessing, you might have a little something to do with that. But I want a miracle in my life. I want something. I, 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 you know, I, I don't want to be disqualified by some stuff that I don't try to do myself. I need a miracle. This guy was doing a miracle. They, they said he could do signs. They said he would do wonders. They said he would be doing all kinds of these things. And, and in fact, it was said that it, he raised some folk right from the dead. Now I got to tell you this. I preached two funerals. Um, I got a third one next Tuesday. Amen. In Norfolk. And Thursday, next Thursday. Amen. I'm not sure I'm going to be preaching that one or not, but they asked me. But I have the nerve. They, they told me as a young preacher, never preach about you know, Jesus bringing people back to life at a funeral. I was like, oh, that sounds like the best kind of sermon to preach. They, they, they need to know that. That, that mama not dead. Daddy not dead. They, they, they got to know that's not even them. They crying over a casket, amen, of dust from the dust. Hallelujah. That's why I always ask them. I said, what's your favorite drink? Lord, have mercy. Glory to God. Look at that pretty bottle right there. She's going to happen to give me some ginger ale. Glory to God. All the green label. Got a little top on it. But guess what? When I swing this thing down in the, the next hour or so, this bottle going in the trash, y'all. Because right. right. the best part is this bottle is what's in, in the bottle. Right. Oh, y'all missed y'all shot. I thought y'all was going to run. I thought this whole section was just going to start shouting. Y'all going to tear all them pews over there. I'm going to come back to y'all in a minute. So, so, so now we had many, many rabbis predict that a Messiah would come. Mm -hmm. they, they, they've been talking about this thing for a minute. In fact, every year they talked about it. You know, Jesus coming back. He's coming back. He's coming back. Oh, it's 1999. Year 2000. He's coming back. He's coming back. Oh, it's an eclipse coming in April. He's coming back. Now he's coming back. No man knows the day. He knows the hour. That the Son of Man is coming. So we got to get ready. Turn to your neighbor and say, get ready. Get ready. Get ready. Yes, yes, he's just around the day. But with the Romans, the bed kept getting bigger and bigger. You know, the kind of rabbi they predicted was very different from this young brother. He had plenty of messiahs who came. I mean, we had all of those. And we, you know, they were uh, men who claimed that they were the messiah. You know, some of them said they were going to be president, and some of them said they were going to be the Pope, and, you know, some of them said they were going to be leaders of other nations, and some of them threatened with nuclear weapons. But this guy was different. This guy was different. Rome rose up, defeated every single one of those guys. But he was different. He didn't come claiming to defeat Rome. He didn't, he, he, he I, I, I'm not sure if Jesus would have voted. I, I don't know if he would have been a voter, but, 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 I, but I believe he would have held everybody in office accountable. He wouldn't try to overthrow the government, but I think he would have spoke of what we needed to do in terms of our civic duties. This, this brother, in fact, 
in the week that we arrived, he did a strange thing. Listen to this. I did not see it myself, but it was said that he rode into the city. He didn't come through the west side, but he came through the east side. And he was claiming he was the Messiah. And guess what he was riding, y'all? A donkey? Come on, man, that can't be the Messiah. Not on a donkey. That can't be right. And they tried to manipulate it. They tried to change it. They said, the word of God is not right. It's a metaphor. And when it says donkey, it means something greater. But we recognize that it was the fulfillment of prophecy. Amen. That indeed he would come meek and lowly. And that the people would be shouting, Hosanna! Hosanna! We gave y'all flowers last year. Y'all gave out flowers too, didn't you? Hey, Amen. We spent some money on flowers, y'all. Yeah, we still got some flowers, still some like that. I, get I wasn't there last Sunday. Give me some. We told people, y'all gonna bring the flowers next time. Bring that Easter outfit, but y'all bring the flowers. But this brother had people sitting for him. Like that sister's song for us. Yes. Holy! Glory to God. Amen. Zachariah said that they would do it. But the rabbis told us it's all symbolic. Try to confuse us with the scripture. Mm. Let me hasten on by letting you know. So the week went on. It was a wonderful time. We heard the Holy Scriptures. Red, man, I love that part. The Hebrew language. It was marvelous music. Good food. Then it was a big stir. Something happened over at the church. Mama. It was over in the temple area. Mm. In fact, at one point we saw him at a distance. A lot of people were around him. He argued with the religious lawyers who called themselves scribes. He'd argue with the priests. And he seemed like everyone that he came in contact with would argue with him. Oh, you would have called him a rabble rouser. You would have called him a troublemaker. You would have called him a smarty pants in Sunday school. He, he just had questions that they could not answer. But this time I thought, mm, he's too average. He's too humble. He's not loud spoken. He's not, he, he, he's too reserved. He's not charismatic enough. He's not walking around with his chest stuck out. Certainly, this can't be the Messiah. And I talk myself out of it. I mean, every one of our feasts, we were told by the rabbi, symbolized the Messiah in some way. Every one, the Passover, he was in. Yeah, the, the Messiah would fit in that. And as I begin to think about it, I look at some of the, the doorposts that you have here, and, and I think about how he was it, it, it is enamored in every single one of those feasts. But then, Something peculiar happened. It was Friday. It was the day that we celebrated the Passover in the evening and the day the Passover lamb was killed following the Judean tradition. It's a big day, y'all. And, and before the third hour, I go into the city, right? And I'm already hot. I'm already sticky. I'm already, you know, ah, got that green stuff floating all over the place. Sweat pouring off of me, but I went, I went, I went. There was excitement though, and I was going in to prepare. I'm about to kill the Passover lamb. Oh, some of y'all down south don't know nothing about bringing chickens and, you know, watching the chicken run her head and spitting blood, spitting all over the place. I didn't know about it either until I went down south. Amen to Charlotte. Amen. And then they told me, put the bricks underneath the, underneath the bed and... <laughs> Had bricks underneath the bed. I was like, look, you need put some gloves on, boy, and put these bricks underneath the bed. Y'all gonna go to the bathroom, go to the bathroom now. Your yeah, man, the rest of the house gonna be cold. And y'all don't know what I'm talking about. But here it was. Let it fire. And I'm ready to kill it. I got my boys with me. I'm gonna show them how it's done. And of 
great cloud was coming into the city. He just pushed me right on out the way. And I'm thinking about what is this all about? Mm. I heard this week about the Messiah. I heard about all the things. I hope some of y'all not coming to Easter. I hope y'all just heard of something. I, I pray y'all know something. I pray y'all coming to see. I pray y'all coming to hear and ready to go and tell. To tell somebody that this is, this is our Christmas. This is Mother's Day. This is our Fourth of July. This is the biggest day in Christianity. So I, I walk through one of the western gates and I, and I go on, amen, to the worn stones of the street. And so I'm in such deep thought and I didn't notice that as I walked, the crowd was no longer walking with me. Folk had just peeled back against the wall. Suddenly I looked up as if I was walking from a dream. And there they were, the Romans. But these were not just any Romans. These were those that they were about their business. They were the execution detail. Oh, we saw too many of them, amen, in our day. I don't know about you, amen. They told me in America they would they would hang black men in trees and, and they would set them on fire and they would call out all of the folks to see. Well, we saw too many of those in our day. So first we would come to the centurion who was riding high upon his horse. Arrogant, proud, horse prancing, speaking of the, of the audacity of Rome. Then there'd come a man who holds a sign that would hold up the actual crime that was committed by the prisoner that was in tow. I couldn't see that, but, but then there was four foot soldiers. In the midst of them was a prisoner. Mm -hmm. Oh, I tried to leap, you know, to the side to kind of get out of the way. They, they, they run me down and they said, think nothing about it, but, but, but as I did, I looked between them so and I can see him. There he was. I saw the prisoner. Not his face. I, I, I knew how this one was to die. You see, in our day when Rome killed men, in many ways, uh, some they cut your head off. Mm -hmm. uh, that's, that's the death of a high official, but the highest, amen, way to kill somebody was to strangle them. Then, then, there was the, then there was the pillar, amen, that you would stand on and they would shoot you with arrows. Lord have mercy, but, 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 but that would be nothing compared to when they would bury you up to your head and just stomp you to death. These were, listen, back in that day, these were good ways to die. Mm -hmm. Good ways to die. Then there were lesser ways, like like being thrown to the animals, you know, like 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 Daniel and the lions, being thrown to the animals. But 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 this man would enjoy none of those, for he would die by what we consider as Jews to be the most wretched way to end your life. Have mercy, God. He was going to what we call the crucifixion. Uh, I, I know you wear them little crosses around your neck and they look all pretty. Some of you got a little man on them. Some of you don't have a man on them. And, uh, but back in my day, we didn't wear no crosses. Man. Because it meant something <laughs> so heavy to us. Man. That old, not shiny, rugged man. cross. Yes. It, it was a terrible way to die, y'all. First, they take the victim. After they condemned, then they would beat them. They would kick them. They would spit on them. They had beat this brother so bad, his face was, was Emmett Till like. Unrecognizable. And while all of that, now they require him to carry his cross. 
cross be up that hill that we talked about and uh, as he was carrying it to the place of execution but but as he went a soldier pulled back what we call the cat of nine tails to flog him to death realizing that he was within an inch of death he drained from beating him one more time he looked at me and said he said come here boy and I know I didn't have much of a choice. I didn't really want to do it. But I believe it was what I had to do in that very moment. My mind, you know how your mind goes through and it takes a million things in that moment when you have to take up your cross. When you have that moment in your life where you're trying to make a decision between left or right, or right or wrong, or up or down. And you hear your mama say, boy, make good decisions. God, don't do that. I would never done that. Don't do. Make the same mistakes I made. Ain't better you try to determine what you should do in that moment because it can change the rest of your life. Well, as I looked at this man, I knew he had already received a beating, a flagellation almost to death. His back was bloody. <laughs> He still had clothes on it, but you can see how it was stuck to him, amen, and stuck to his undergarment. But, but, but he was bending over, amen, under that great beam, and he had not fallen, but it looked as if he might. But he ever would have, I don't know, but as I pushed to the wall, the Roman soldier came, raised it up and said, pick it up, boy. And I followed his orders. They had a terrible law back then. Is that the law was that you can ask somebody to carry something. Mm -hmm. uh, like for one mile. But, 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 but this was a pretty heavy thing. I was pretty fit back then. But, but, but they called it the law, watch this, of conscription. Mm -hmm. We called it other things. <laughs> personally. We did not like it, but now he was asking me to pick up a piece of wood that this man had bled on, mm. sweated on, mm. oh, yeah. spit had dropped from his face mm -hmm. upon. And though we hated those moments, it was somebody being crucified. Mm. A Jew that knew that this man would be cursed by God and had done some terrible thing. I knew if I touched that wood with one finger, I couldn't go with no other feast. I would be considered unclean. But you know what I did? I picked it up that day. I grabbed the hood of that thing. And I carried it on my shoulders. The woman looked at me in a way, amen, that, 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 that had a distaste. But somehow my heart stopped. But my legs kept moving. And as I was now trying to gaze and take a look at him as he kind of trailed behind me, I was fearful that he wasn't going to make it. But I lifted that cross. I lifted that beam, and I think about it now in dreams, and I think about it how I actually had a chance to walk with him. Yes. A black man from Syria, bearing my own cross. He spoke only once during the time we walked out of the gate into the place of execution. There, there were some Jewish women there. Mm -hmm. And they were crying, but, but we, we were used to that. They, they just crying to be crying. They weren't really sorry. It was really an act. It's, it's just kind of a part of our culture. I don't know if y'all go through that in y'all funerals today. But I had not heard what he had said, but he turns to these women. Weep for yourself. I don't know if y'all ever put that in the seven last book sayings. 
This is before he got to the cross. He then uttered a terrible prophecy about the destruction of the city. Amen. And I couldn't quite hear it, but this must have been the words of a bitter man, I thought. Seemed as if he was saying, what's going to happen to us if you do this to me? At that Westgate, you know, um, it's a garbage dump, y'all. You can smell it when you come in the city. If the wind is blowing just right, it's a hill that's called the place of the skull. It's in a series of posts. Some a little bit higher than others, but it's where these Romans, these Romans put people to death. I don't know about you, but I see these pictures of white men and white women and white children watching black men dangle from trees. Their carcasses burn. Pieces of their flesh cut off. Placed in jars as trophies. But we never got used to that. We can never got used to that smell. We never got used to that sight. And I say for you, as I say to others, the agony began then. People walked by and taught him. He spit on him. But guess who it was, y'all? It was our priest that were doing it, the preachers. The bishops, the elders of my church were spitting upon him. He spoke. One thing he said, Father, forgive them. But they know not what they do. I start to get them. You must be sick in your head. You should be praying for your own forgiveness. And you praying for these. A man as guilty as you should be fearing to meet his God. Then as if by a voice something inside me said, unless of course. He is innocent. And they are guilty. I hasten to a close by letting you know that in that ninth hour, we document that he actually cried out. He cried out in my native language. <laughs> You translate it with three words. It's one word for us. To tell us now, it is finished. I'm saying, what is finished? What is he talking about? Bowed his head in the, in the fold of his shoulders and he said, Father, into thy hand. Have mercy, God. I commend my spirit. I preached that this morning. It's a prayer. It's a, it's, it's, it's a position. It, it's a mentioning of his power. But I want y'all to believe this. That when it is finished, it's such a powerful statement for us that means more than just he's ready to die. It means more than just you, amen, are ready to receive him, amen, as he was. He is done. It is finished. All prophecy has been completed. The checklist has been made. All has been arranged. Everything that needed to be in place was now in place. Oh, I could just think to myself as I began to see and not understand what was happening. We went on about our feast. We went on about, and then it hit me right in the middle of Pentecost. Wait a minute. There was no forecast for uh, 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 an eclipse to happen. Eclipse just happens. Uh, documented now about four minutes. And it's some accident. Oh, but the sun, when he died, refused to shine. We found that the, 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 the curtain that was there in the church, in the temple, that separated. 
after the common day was the very son of the most high God. And I relished in that moment. I relished in the moment to know that he told us to go and to meet him in a place and that he would meet us there. I don't know about you, but I want to meet him. I want to know if it's true. I want to know if the tomb is empty. I want to know if he's still there. I really do want to know. I want to know. I close now. My birthday was on March the 21st. Sister Y'all gonna call us up, taking me out. Hallelujah. We went to a fancy place now. Y'all ever want some good steak? Go to a place in Raleigh called Capitol Grill. Lord have mercy, don't sound fancy, do we? I know Ruth Chris, that's your style. That's your style. Yeah. But we didn't go there because they were working on some stuff. But go to Capitol Grill. Go to Capitol Water, honey. The water. The water tastes different. The water. Hallelujah, the water tastes different. Amen. So I had to get up. I had to run. I had to go to, to the bathroom just want to freshen up, get myself together. Amen. But now I'm in a high for a little restaurant. You know, I got to get myself right. You know, button on top button, you know. Be fancy when I walk in there. But glory to God, when I got up, I just dropped my napkin right on the floor. Lord, have mercy. Hallelujah. I said, oh my God, let me get my napkin up. Amen. Amen. Then I just crumpled it up and I just threw it on the table. Glory to God. Amen. And, and, and the waitress was coming. Amen. As I was walking away and she said, are you finished? I said, no, no, no. I, I'll be back. And it was a black waitress and she wanted to not let me be embarrassed and she wanted to explain to me amen, what I need to do with my neck. Amen. So she said, what you got to do is you got to make sure that you do you before your neck. Fold that thing. Amen. Yeah. They fold it really nice. You know, this one of them places, you know, they get the little crumb thing that scoop up the crumb. Y'all don't know what I'm talking about. You know, that's fancy right there. They, they got the, the entree and the, the second and the, and the sorbet, the cleanse your palate. You know, really nice. You know, you want you to look a duck like we had when you first came in. But you fold that up. And then when you place that, amen. What, 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 what that's telling me. Is that you coming back? Lord have mercy. And then I was reminded, amen, that when they went to visit Jesus in the tomb, amen, they said they put a napkin over his, his face, amen. And for the life of me, I could not understand why somebody, amen, would get to the place where if I had a napkin over my face, amen, and I woke up from the day to do the work that God had called me to do, I would have jumped up out of there that that off somewhere and I've been on about my business letting everybody know that the Lord, hallelujah my God has walked me up but they said that Jesus took his time, hallelujah and he folded up that old napkin and he laid it there in the tomb so when they came in they knew that he was coming back I come not there you to come back Thing. Yeah. 
For each person, that's how God works individually. Each person may have received something differently. Each person may have heard something differently. But whatever you heard, it was for you. Amen? And so now you have an opportunity to respond to what was said to you. Amen? Do you need to go on a little further? Do you need to go a little faster? Do you need to love a little harder? Do you need to pray a little more? What was said exactly to you? Amen? And this is your opportunity at this time. We invite you. We invite you to the altar and, and to release that thing that God has spoken to you. Release it back to God. Hallelujah. Respond back to God. You don't have to respond to us. Because it was God who spoke to you. Yeah. So you respond back to God. Would that be one this, this evening who heard something just for them and who wants to come to the altar to, to confirm it with the Lord? What did the Lord speak to your heart? Yes. That's what this whole season, this whole Lent season, this resurrection season is all about. Hearing from the Lord. What changes do I need to make in myself? Oh, it is Jesus. Oh, it is Jesus. For I have touched the hem of his garment. Hallelujah. And his love has made me whole. It is Jesus. Would that be one this morning, this evening, that has heard the word from Jesus and want to come to the altar this evening and just confirm it with the Lord? Hallelujah. Yes, Lord, I will follow you. Yes, God. Yes, Lord, I urge you. Yes. And there will there be one who wants to just commit their whole life to the Lord. Hallelujah. Nothing wrong with me. To do. You say, well, I just did that. I already, I've been baptized. I did that before. I've been there, done that. I bought the t-shirt. I've done all those things already. Renewal. Amen. Renewal. That's what this is all about. Amen. Thank you, Lord. As we can sing some type of invitational song yes, so that we can receive into our spirits. That's what singing is about to me. As I hear your voice, Lord God, and my soul receives your voice, my soul says yes. How about that? Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. From the bottom of my heart to the depths of my soul, yes, Lord. Completely. Completely, yes. My soul says yes. My soul says yes. Come one more time, won't you? Yeah. Yes, Lord. against drugs, we're praying against gangs, we're praying against 
depression. We're praying against suicide. We're praying against all those things that are binding our community and keeping us separated from the Lord. And while we're out there bearing a good witness, hallelujah, that we will invite somebody else to come and know Jesus. And so will you join us? This is just the beginning. We were called to serve just as Simon the Cyrene. He, he, he didn't feel like that was an offer, but it was a commandeering. <laughs> but it, what it meant has had eternal rewards. Yeah. Hallelujah. When you think about these things that he calls us to do, if they have eternal rewards, it's all worth it. Amen? Amen. Amen. My brothers and sisters, again, I'm so glad that you joined us. And I'll look for you again on tomorrow and definitely at 11 a.m. on Sunday. Amen. Amen. And I heard Jesus will meet you here. <laughs> He'll meet you here. So my brothers and sisters, as we prepare our hearts and our minds to, to leave this place, I'd ask that you would stand to your feet. And we will praise God together. Amen. 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 And, and this fine preacher will give us his benediction. And we will, hallelujah, thank you. Praise God. Praise God for you. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. From whom all blessings flow. Hallelujah. Let us sing it. Amen. Y'all know it? Amen. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise him. Praise him, all creatures here below. Praise him. Praise him above the heavenly Come on, let me sing this part. Praise God, the Son, and Holy Ghost. Our Father, we thank you. That we all are going to have our crosses mm -hmm. that we're going to need to bear. Mm -hmm. There's always something still left yet for us to do. Mm -hmm. Some bore a cross to even be here on tonight. Mm -hmm. Some even going through pain, even in their bodies right, right now. The sister that came to the ask that you give her a double portion, Father. Mm -hmm. A double portion of her trouble, her trouble, God, that she has in her life right now. We thank you, Lord, for souls that have been changed and resurrected and mindsets moved. We thank you for a city that thinketh not rightly to not only pray for a change, but be ready to get off their knees, hallelujah, and do something to make a change. Yeah. Help us, oh God, to be the real church yeah. that is destined to make a difference. And we're clearly going to give you the glory, the honor, and the praise. We ask it all, Father, in Jesus' name. Now unto him who is able to keep us from falling, to present us faultless before his divine majesty with exceeding joy yeah. to the only one and wise true God, be glory and dominion, both majesty and power, and all God's children say, Amen. 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 Go in peace and be the God of